Welcome back. In my previous lesson, I mentioned that the primary reasons MVPs fail are because founders, both technical and non-technical, don't understand who their early adopter is or the value proposition they're offering to their early adopters. Instead, they just jump right into building a product, investing a lot of time and resources. Unfortunately, the results of prioritizing building over validating an idea can result in little to no traction. And this can be really demotivating for most and eventually lead to burnout. Given that a startup is dealing with a lot of uncertainty and has very limited resources, I advise startup founders to start with a concierge MVP. A concierge MVP is an experience, it's not a product. So instead of jumping right into building a product, you're going to take the time to create a hypothesis of who your early adopters may be. And then after that, you're going to create a hypothesis of what the value proposition would be that would appeal to these early adopters. Now, once you have both hypotheses, you can then proceed to create an experience that will help you test whether or not these are the right hypotheses. So even if you decide that your ultimate goal is to create a technology or a physical product, you should start by crafting an experience. Then, as you approach early adopters and receive feedback, you can focus your efforts on what actually needs to be built. So just to give you a simple example, I actually started my own startup with a concierge MVP last December, and it was for Femgineer. The experience I provided was a one-page ad on my site about teaching an eight-week online course on product development. It was just an outline. I didn't actually create any curriculum. So as people would visit the site, they would request for information, ask me questions, and provide me with feedback regarding the ad. And as they did, I tweaked the ad, which was essentially the value proposition. And as I engaged with the visitors and I listened to their feedback, I was also able to understand who my early adopters were and who they weren't. And this ultimately led me to understand what I needed to provide to those who were my early adopters. Once I had enough pre-sales for the course, I started to develop the curriculum, which was after all the product. And I took the same approach for my other startup, BusyBee, which is a CRM solution for fitness studios. Before building the CRM solution, I put up a one-page ad listing the product's benefits. And those who were interested in trying out the product would be able to give me an email address. After that, I'd reach out to them and I would have a series of conversations with them. I'd help understand what it is they were looking for. And once again, I would get feedback that I could use to build my product. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of product you are creating. The purpose of a concierge MVP is to give people a taste and to collect feedback from them so that you can then go on to create an actual product. There are two other benefits to doing a concierge MVP. The first is you're going to establish a very close connection with your early adopters. It's going to make it easier for them to then open up to you and provide you with feedback. The second is that you're going to be able to reduce your iteration cycle. You can quickly change the value proposition or the early adopter you're going after just in your messaging. And if you find that the messaging that you put out there isn't attracting anyone, then you can go on and change it. Now in the next lecture, I will provide you with more reasoning as to why it's important for both technical and non-technical founders to start with a concierge MVP.